Well, today's the day. We can finally get a brand new wheel set up along with a brand new brake set up on our Evo 10 so we can get this thing looking just a little bit less crusty. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's an exciting day because we're finally gonna get a set of wheels on the Evo as well as our freshly powder coated brakes, new rotors, new pads. Uh, in the front, we're doing axles, wheel bearings, all of the above really. Um, ball joints, everything to make this thing perfect, as perfect as we can in the suspension department. So, uh, besides coilovers. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna start with the rears tonight, because I don't have a whole lot of time. So tonight we'll get to the rears, get the rotors, pads, calipers uh, done. I still have to build up the calipers with the new seals because we stripped them all the way down to get powder coated. So I have a new kit so we can rebuild those and get them nice and fresh and then uh, we'll get them slapped on the car. So let's get straight to work. Well, the rear sticker or decal, whatever you want to call it, it's a little bit big for that area, if it would focus. A little bit long, but uh, we, uh, we made it work. So uh, you can't really see the rear ones anyways, so I'm not too worried about it. The front ones are pretty spot on. Um, but yeah, so this sticker, it's kind of like, a, I put it on my Instagram story, trying to figure out which ones to run. And this one's kind of like, a, little sparkly, kind of cool. I don't know. Uh, the other one I had was just the normal red, but I figured this would go pretty good with the car and this color. So we're gonna run them for now. We can always change them out with, uh, with the other ones if need be, but this brake caliper is complete. I did this one just kind of without walking you guys through it. So now this one, I know exactly what I'm doing so I can uh, walk you guys through how to build one of these. So once we have these separated, I'm just gonna go ahead, hit it with a blast of air, make sure there is no sand in there and they're as clean as we can get them. So you don't wanna forget about this little O-ring. This little guy just tucks in here. If you forget that, you're gonna be leaking good amount of brake fluid. So don't forget that guy. So here we have our fluid seals and two dust seals. These are gonna go in the caliper. So first we're gonna take our fluid seal and just gonna tuck it in the groove inside the caliper. Pretty basic. Now I just take a little bit of brake fluid and kind of use that as a little lubricant around that seal and around the rest of the caliper. Now we can go ahead and take our piston, get a little bit of brake fluid on that guy where it's gonna mate with the seal. And we can go ahead and just start to push that in. Something like that. Now we can take our dust seal, wrap it around the groove in the piston, kind of like so. 
And then just go ahead and push your piston all the way in. Just like that. And then you can push your dust seal into its groove. And now this one is good to go. So now it's the same thing here. Take your fluid seal, get it tucked, put the piston, pushed in, and your dust seal. With these now ready to get put together, I just take a little bit of brake fluid, put it on that little O-ring as well, and now we can combine the two. Then go ahead and take your bolts, and go ahead. There we go. Now I just take my ratchet and kind of tighten them on the table, and then once it's in the car, you can get some nice cranks into it. Make sure these things don't come loose. It is your brake after all. You don't want them coming loose. All right, now for the brake pads, I just take a little bit of the grease they supply and put it on the back surface where the piston's gonna mate with it. So once you have the grease on there, you can go ahead and kind of plop the pads into the caliper. Now, same thing with these little rods. I just put some grease on there and uh, just kind of helps it go through. Once you got those two little rods in with our little spring, you can just go ahead and tap the back sides of these until they're all the way in. Last thing we gotta do is go ahead and get our little Brembo sticker on there. Almost forgot, we gotta install our little bleeder screws. Go ahead and just thread those guys back in. Now for the front side, we got something a little special. We got a JDC titanium bleeder screw. These guys just came out recently and uh, we're gonna test them out. And there we have it. So our caliper is 100% complete and ready to go on the car. And we got our JDC titanium bleeder screw there, which looks so freaking good. So matching it up with the caliper, same colors, and all the titanium. Dang, she's gonna look super sick, super stoked to get these things on the car. So let's get that done. Just got the passenger side rear caliper on, and my gosh, that looks good. With a, finally a fresh rotor, no more rusty boys. And uh, yeah, we are solid. So these JDC brake bleeders are on the site. And remember, if you use code BSHOMBORN at checkout, you're gonna save 10% off your order of titanium goodies. So don't miss out there. Let's go ahead and finally reveal the wheels that we're gonna be slapping on this car. Now, before I do that, I just wanna say some of you guys might hate me, but I have my reasoning behind it and they're gonna look good either way, so I don't really care, but uh, yeah, let's bring them out. Bam. Well, here we have it. I did go with a set of ESRs, but I'm not mad about it because these things look super sick and ultimately with this car, I don't plan on keeping it. And uh, it just wasn't worth it financially to stay in the budget, going with like a nice set of TEs or works or something like that. These are fantastic wheels. ESR has come a long way and they look freaking sick on here, especially with the caliper and fresh rotors behind it. Um, yeah, fitment is on point. It's 
nice and flush. So I believe these are 18 by 10 and a half plus 22s. Uh, no spacers or anything wrapped in a set of 275, 35, 18s. Some good old nittos. So it's really, really good tires. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be the wheel setup. So now we just gotta do all the other wheels. Now for the fronts, we got a little bit more work to do. I gotta clean up the CV axles, get all the rust off of them. And then we're gonna be replacing the wheel bearings and replacing the ball joint boots on ball joint and tie rod, I believe. And then same thing, we gotta get the brakes all set up, rebuilt and uh, get the wheels on. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the car pushed away from the bench a little bit. That way I can knock out the rear brakes um, on the driver's side and then we'll, uh, we'll move on to the front. A Couple minutes later, I got the whole rear end together as well on the driver's side. But while I was doing so, we've been talking about our wheel bearing being bad, but just how bad? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's how you're supposed to take wheels off. Still got my rotor on there. I still got my hub connected to the back. Um, so yeah, luckily, that's all we can say is we're so lucky that that didn't happen while we were pushing the car around with a freshly painted car because that would have been pretty catastrophic. So um, now all I can do is hope that this wheel bearing comes out nice and easy, um, which I probably just jinxed myself, but we got four bolts in the back. You can see them kind of poking through the front. Um, so we just got to pull those out and then hopefully it'll come loose and it's not seized in place. But being that it's a northeastern car and you can see the amount of rust on it, uh, I don't have very high hopes. We might need a press, but I do have brand new wheel bearing there and also some white line um, boots to replace the cracked ones because I believe the passenger side has a cracked ball joint boot. Um, these things are very easy, especially with the way these control arms get pushed up into the, uh, your knuckle. So, uh, we just gotta be careful if we do replace them that we don't break the new ones. I think this side's good, but we'll find out here in a second. I've now gone ahead and cleaned up the mating side of our axle where it's gonna mate with the seals in the transfer case. Same thing on that one, so no more rust there. Obviously, you know, it could be cleaned up a little bit more to make them beautiful, but for right now, I just wanna get these in the car and uh, that way, you know, we don't have to risk destroying a brand new wheel bearing. So typically this shaft will be disconnected from the axle, but because they are together, I'm gonna try to slide it right through the transfer case as is and see if we can get it in. Um, just eliminates one step, I guess. I did end up having to take the little half shaft off the axle to actually, you know, get it seated in there, but it's all good to go now. Everything is nice and tight and we're ready to get the brake set up, put together, which I already have set up on the table over there. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the pistons in there. Same process as the rears, just uh, two pistons per side, or should I say two pistons per side of the caliper. Four pistons total, so let's go ahead and get that done.
One front completely knocked out, and my gosh, does that thing look good. I love that decal, actually, and I'm glad we went with that one. So shout out to Paul for uh, the suggestion. Paul from JDC, that is. I just realized we forgot something very important. Our good old JDC brake bleeder, so let's get that installed. And there we got it. We got the titanium brake bleeder on, and this caliper is ready to go on the car, so let's, uh, let's do it. Dang, that looks so freaking good. I love it. Now we can get the wheel on, and then that's one less side we have to worry about. Last thing we got to do is the front passenger side. Uh, same thing, wheel bearing. This one we got to replace one of the boots on the ball joint, and then uh, yeah, same process. So uh, yeah, let's get the wheel on, and we'll see how it looks with the black frame. I wish I had a fender so we could check fitment and everything, but that is still out at paint. So we'll have to deal without it for a little while. Yeah, that's a thick boy right there. Looking at the rear, perfectly fit. I'm hoping that once we get the various fenders on here, it's also gonna be like a perfect fit. Um, yeah, super sick. It's got quite a bit of camber on it right now. So we're definitely gonna need an alignment, but uh, yeah, overall it's definitely drivable like that. Seen way worse <laughs> and uh, yeah, looks so freaking good. I want to get it outside so you can really see like the calipers and everything behind it. But um, yeah, I dig it. Now we just got to do the passenger side. We'll be wrapped up. Well, things escalated pretty quickly. We ended up just taking the whole knuckle off because obviously this boot is torn at the top, as you can see. And then the bottom also is torn. So we're going to be replacing this guy. This is absolutely demolished. And then while I was going through that, I noticed that the boot on the tie rod, it's kind of hard to see because it's in the back, but it is torn right here. So we're gonna be replacing both of these. So I have two brand new ones from White Line and then also some bushing lubricant from them as well. So it'll be nice and fresh and uh, ready to rip. Fresh wheel bearing is now installed. Also went ahead and got our new ABS sensor on there. Cause if you guys remember back to like one of our first videos, it's actually pulling this out and it broke the ABS sensor. And those things are not cheap. So I was pretty upset, but we got a new one on there. We got new uh, boots on our tie rod and our ball joint. And uh, yeah, pretty much ready to get our brake set up on there. Just like the rest of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And uh, yeah, three, two, one. Front passenger is all done, which means all four are now all done. Now, I didn't just go ahead and do this while I was making some solid progress there. I also decided to go slap the drive or the drive shaft in underneath and also came up here and got our front motor or tranny mount slapped on. Now that I got new bolts for that. So we, uh, we're so close guys. Literally, I need a battery. And the fuel system, I think what I'm gonna do, I kind of made a decision. I'm going to clean out the injectors on that rail. These are some FIC 1000s. I'm gonna clean those out and we're gonna run those to get our brake in miles. And while we're running those, I will order up a new uh, rail with some FIC 2000s and uh, the whole shebang. But as far as the fuel pump, I pulled that out the other day to check it out and it does have one Walboro 450 in there, but it's super crusty. So we're gonna get this cleaned up. I'm probably just gonna throw a radium hanger in and uh, then we just gotta wire it up. We'll be Gucci. So literally we need a battery. We gotta get the fuel system back in, which shouldn't take more than a couple hours. And then uh, just gotta load this up with fluids, get some oil, trans fluid and uh, transfer case fluid. And then uh, we should be running. Oh, I gotta get the serpentine belt on. I did order up a new one and it is here, so we'll get that on tomorrow as well. But other than that, yeah, we're wrapping this thing up. Get some intercooler piping, radiator, 
The basics, catch can. Now obviously we still gotta get the front clip on with the radiator, get all our intercooler piping and intercooler on, but that stuff doesn't take too long. And honestly, I could probably, if I spent my entire day on it tomorrow, could have this thing up. The only thing I don't have at the house, and it's ordered, but it's not here, is our transmission fluid. I have our T-case fluid, I have engine oil, I have the filters, I have all that. So uh, yeah, just waiting on transmission fluid. Should be here this week, and uh, we should be good. Also, fittings for the catch can and the AN lines. I'm waiting on those. Uh, I ordered them like a week ago, but good old eBay shipping from California with DHL. Nah, not ideal, but... <laughs> They'll get here eventually. I'll probably pick this video up tomorrow and uh, we'll make some more progress, so see you then. Okay, it is a new morning and what I'd like to get done today, I wanna get a new fusible link box on because if you guys remember, they actually just put a jumper wire in instead of just replacing the box. I'll show you guys what I mean. Right here, you can see that fuse all the way to the right is blown in there and they just put a jumper wire, so we're just gonna replace that box. They're nice and cheap. I also wanna get the serpentine belt on and Maybe an oil filter, the oil cooler, uh, get that all put together, maybe even put some oil in the engine and uh, you know, see what we can get done. So let's start with that fuse link box, super simple, it's just a couple wires and a couple, couple nuts and uh, should be good. We got our serpentine belt on, we got the new fuse link box on, all nice and clean. I can actually get the cover on there now if I end up running the red cover. I know it doesn't really go with anything, so. Uh, then we got the oil pressure sensor kind of routed where it's gotta go. And we got the oil filter on, the oil drain plug down there. I guess I don't have one, <laughs> so I just went ahead and ordered up a drain plug. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to wait on that, unfortunately. Now. Because we're pretty much just waiting on the rest, I do have an injector cleaner coming in uh, this week. So I'll get the injectors clean and then we can get those in. Uh, I do want to jump inside the car because if you guys remember, the previous owner, don't mind the pillar laying on it, but the previous owner had like that little death knob on the steering wheel and the steering wheel is kind of torched. So I did go ahead and pick up a new one. I've had it chilling here for a while. It's actually nice and dusty now. So we're gonna slap this guy in and uh, then we don't have to deal with that death knob thing. New steering wheel is installed. I also went ahead and just cleaned up the dash a little bit. It was still super dirty from being at the body shop. Still gotta detail the rest of the interior again, but um, overall, she's pretty clean, not too shabby. But that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. The first star is probably either gonna be the next video or the video after. I'm gonna wrap the roof probably today and uh, whatever else needs to be vinyl wrap black and uh, we'll go from there. But just waiting on a few more things and we'll be able to crank this thing up. So I'm so excited guys. Like I know I say that in every video, but I just wanna be able to start this thing, hear it, and uh, back it out of the garage under its own power. Because uh, I've, I don't think I've actually ever heard an Evo run. Well, I guess I have. I've heard an Evo, but uh, yeah. I don't know what this thing's gonna sound like. We're gonna figure it out together, but I'll catch you in the next one. But until then, peace out. See y'all later.